the Goya Garba Tantra. Secret Essence, Definitive Nature Just As It Is. Part 1, The Root Tantra. Translated by Lama Chonam and Sangye Khandro of the Light of Bharatsana Translation Group, under the guidance of Ken Rinpoche Namdrol. The Root of All Tantras, The Root Tantra Magical Manifestation Matrix, Secret Essence Definitive Nature Just As It Is, Gesang Ba'ai Sningpo Deko Na Nyid Nigespa. Homage to the Bhagawan Samantabhadra, Transcendent, Fully Endowed Conqueror. When this speech is taught, the Tathagata, the Fully Perfected Sambhogakaya Buddha, the Fully Endowed Transcendent Conqueror of Great Abundance, in the nature of the Vajra Enlightened Body, Speech, and Mind of all Tathagatas of the Ten Directions in the Fourth Time, did not exclude, does not exclude, and will not exclude anything. And his nature is not individualized, but is inseparably undifferentiated. In the place of the Akanashthita without center or limits, the wheel of wisdom's never-ending ground is ever-present and distinct. The celestial palace is ablaze with wisdom's jewels, and the vastness is unbounded in the ten directions. Because the boundless qualities are ever-increasing, this palace is square and beautifully embossed with precious jewels of surpassing wisdom. The pinnacle symbolizes the entire mandala of the Buddhas of the ten directions, and four times, without exception, undifferentiated as a single nature of all-encompassing wisdom. The jeweled shapes, colors, and so forth are wisdom's inconceivable wisdom, manifestation. The specific distinctions are superb and unsurpassed, while the extent is unfathomable. There are wisdom garlands of various jewels and wreaths, ornamental gutters, varieties of forms, varieties of sounds, varieties of scents, varieties of flavors, and varieties of sensations, naturally occurring and wafting in the ten directions. Without obscuring, the mandala is decorated with inconceivable, luminous ornaments. The four doors to perfect wisdom are the entranceways surmounted by portals, and the palace is endowed with archways of the eight perfect freedoms. The external palace and the internal deities are without existence, always abiding as the inner nature. The lion throne represents fearlessness, the elephant throne strength, the horse throne miraculous activity, the peacock throne power, the Garuda throne unimpeded wisdom, and the mandalas of the sun and moon natural clear light. Upon unstained jeweled lotus seats, the enlightened body appears to not have a front or back. The face can be clearly seen by the entire retinue and is fully endowed with the marks and signs. Inconceivable, these always appear as the multitudes of enlightened body, speech, and mind. The two legs of method and prajna are in the cross-legged posture of evenness, which indicates having subdued passions and abiding in great wisdom. The six arms of wisdom are blazing, wisdom, jewel mudras, that enlightened body, speech, and mind are inconceivable, is indicated by the principal one possessing three heads. For the Bhagawan Tathagata, King of Consciousness, Tathagata, King of Form, Tathagata, King of Feeling, Tathagata, King of Perception, and Tathagata, King of Reaction, each of their colors is radiant blue, white, yellow, red, and green. 
The sacred queens indicate the space of appearances. Solidity of space, suppleness of space, warmth of space, and mobility of space. These and others are the assembly of queens. Being indivisible, they all pervasively abide as the infinitely vast space of phenomena, like, for example, an overflowing sesame pod. Then there are the great awakened ones, the great bodhisattva vajra seeing, the great bodhisattva vajra hearing, the great bodhisattva vajra scent, and the great bodhisattva vajra taste. In the queens of what is seen, what is heard, what is smelled, and what is savored, as well as the great sattva of seeing, the great sattva of hearing, the great sattva of smelling, the great sattva of taste, in the queens of the past, of the present, and of the future gatherings that have not yet occurred. The great conqueror Vajra contact, the great conqueror Vajra contacting, the great conqueror Vajra object of contact, the great conqueror cognition of contact, and their consorts are not eternal, are not non-existent, have no established self, and do not exist with characteristics and so forth. This gathering of an arrangement of inexpressible numbers abides inseparably. Then the Tathagatas in the gathering of their female queens, who are indivisible with the secret itself, the secret mandala, emerge from the Vajra enlightened body, speech, mind, qualities, and activities. E e ma e ma ho, having achieved the mastery of the nature of space as it is, the wisdom mandalas originate from compassion as a matter of course. This self-appearance of the Tathagata himself is a reflection of perfectly pure samadhi, magical, perfectly pure, and utterly lucid. The enlightened body, speech, mind, qualities, and activities have never been marred. Possessing inexhaustible qualities like the precious wish-fulfilling jewel, that is, the ornamental wheel that abides as the supreme Vajra. Thus, these manifest as the secret Vajra words. From the secret essence, definitive nature, just as it is, this concludes the first chapter of the narrative context. Then the Tathagata, the conqueror, apprehender Vajra mind as Samantabhadra, in the manner of the intrinsic nature of all phenomena, without exception, engages with the Vajra queen of activity, all phenomena, as Samantabhadri. By apprehending this, since there is inseparability with the single intrinsic nature of all Tathagatas of the four times and ten directions without exclusion, the Tathagata himself expresses the aphorism to the Tathagata himself. E ma. The Vajra aggregates and their branches are known as the five fully perfected Buddhas. All the many sense sources and elements are the mandala itself of bodhisattvas. Earth and water are Buddha, Lokana, and Mamaki. Fire and wind are Pandaravasini and Samayatara. Space is Akasha Dattvishvari. The three states of existence are primordially awakened and phenomena without exclusion are not other than the state of awakening. Phenomena other than the state of awakening will not be found even by the Buddha himself. Expressing this pleases all the Tathagatas. Then the queen of activity, phenomena as Samantabhadri, becomes indivisible with the conqueror the apprehending mind as Samantabhadra, and the aphorism is expressed in this way. Kie ma ho, the ten directional realms of the trichiliocosm, are primordially non-existent. The three states of existence are the pure lands. 
The five defilements are the state of exaltation. The five aggregates are fully awakened. Since all phenomena are this supreme essence, the victorious ones will not search for a doctrine other than this. Even if the Buddha were to search for a so-called doctrine, the victorious ones have not discovered any other. Thus, the expression by the consort that phenomena are primordially awakened is realized by the Tathagata himself. Then, indivisible with the great nature, the mind that is primordially awakened arises as wisdom. Hence, this is taught. A ma ho. Astonishing, superb phenomena. This is the secret of all fully perfected Buddhas. Within the unborn, all appearances are born. At the moment of their birth, their nature is unborn. A ma ho. Astonishing, superb phenomena. This is the secret of all fully perfected Buddhas. Within the unceasing, all appearances cease. At the moment of their ceasing, they are unceasing. A ma ho. Astonishing, superb phenomena. This is the secret of all fully perfected Buddhas. Within the non-abiding, all appearances abide. At the moment of abiding, they are non-abiding. A ma ho. Astonishing, superb phenomena. This is the secret of all fully perfected Buddhas. Within the non-conceptual, all appearances are conceptual. At the moment of these conceptualizations, they are non-conceptual. A ma ho. Astonishing, superb phenomena. This is the secret of all fully perfected Buddhas. Within freedom from coming and going, there is coming and going. At the moment of coming and going, there is nothing to come and go. Thus, having expressed this, all of the Tathagatas and even the entire gathering of female queens are thoroughly pleased. Then all Tathagatas and their queens, including the entire assembly, express the aphorism. A ma ho, primordial secret phenomena. Untold appearances arise, yet they are a self-secret, very secret by virtue of their nature, not other than the mind's nature that makes this extremely secret. Having expressed this, all the Tathagatas and all phenomena possess the characteristic of having a single essential nature, that is, primordially awakened, although inseparable, due to the ignorance of the concepts of sentient beings. The result ripens as the inconceivable five classes of beings. When great compassion arises, as the great wisdom of awakening, the aphorism is expressed. A ma ho. From within the essence of the Sugatas, confusion occurs. Through the karmic causes of each individual's concepts, countless forms and abundance, places, suffering, and so forth, the self and the individualized fixation with the self all emanate. No captor has bound up anyone, so bondage is non-existent. Even those that are bound are non-existent, due to the conceptualization of fixating upon a self. Like insisting upon tying knots in space, no one has ever been bound or released. In order to reveal this primordial, spontaneously perfected doctrine of the Buddha, diverse manifestations emanate. Thus, the Tathagata himself intentionally brings forth the subject to the Tathagata himself. From the secret essence, definitive nature just as it is, this completes the second chapter on the relative and genuine bodhicitta arising as wisdom. Bodhicitta 
then from all the Tathagatas, that which is called the blessing of great compassion, the six stages of the world, the awareness beings, originates from the Vajra body, speech, and mind of the Tathagatas. Once they manifest as such, by the power of karma, horizontally and from above to below, throughout the ten directions of the six worlds, the inhabitants are without limit and never-ending. In this trichiliocosm world system in each of the individual realms, a distinct great sage conqueror appears to accomplish the welfare of the five classes of beings through the four ways to tame. The Buddha was born, became a renunciate, performed austerities, was enlightened, tamed the Maras, turned the Dharma Chakra, revealed great miracles, passed beyond sorrow, and so forth. These sages, teachers of the doctrine, are omniscient concerning the four times, and knowing the continuity of the minds of all beings, always see through the magical eye of wisdom, always hear through magical hearing, and always accomplish the needs of beings through many magical manifestations. Untainted, Samantabhadra's activity is naturally complete. These are the six states of clairvoyance. The kayas will always be inconceivable, and the enlightened mind is always inconceivable. The faces of the kayas are always inconceivable. The enlightened speech is always inconceivable. In the inconceivable, innumerable manifestations will appear in the ten directions. Even all vehicles are revealed as follows. In order to tame, there are the vehicles of gods and humans, the vehicle of the hearers, the vehicle of the solitary realizers, the vehicle of the bodhisattvas, and the vehicle of the unsurpassed. Due to conceptual ignorance, there are 84,000 passions, and the antidotes for them are 84,000 categories of teachings that were taught, are being taught, and will be taught. As for all of these, through the grasping and fixation of the outer and inner origination of dependent arising, it is held that this is due to the confusion of fixation and that karmic causes and karmic results will never be thwarted. The karmic causes and karmic results will have no effect, will not be able to affect, and there will be nothing to affect. That is ultimate emptiness. Then all Tathagatas express the aphorism in this way. Whatever the confused phenomena of the world may be, through the duality of conceptual ignorance, outer and inner dependent arising revolves. Based upon the differences, happiness and sorrow are then experienced. This never departs from being the intrinsic nature. In the perfectly correct mode of the magical play of duality, there is no self and no self that grasps to other. This perfectly pure nature of phenomena is a single mode of being. Self and the self's possessiveness are only incorrect understanding. Aside from that, not even the subtlest nature of phenomena that is more profound exists. Incorrect conceptualizations are utilized subjectively by themselves, and this has never been otherwise. Although there seems to be continuity between the root cause and the resultant incorrect understanding, one moment is like basic space free from base or root. This manner of abiding is the very nature of perfectly pure basic space. The nature is mastered, and since it utilizes itself, self, others, in the continuum of concepts are the perfectly pure, unsurpassed, supreme vehicle. The renunciation of the four vehicles is the result of the sole vehicle. When thoroughly realized and incisively analyzed within the inherently non-existent, 
anything can seem to exist. A Buddha will not pass into nirvana. The doctrine will also never vanish. In order to tame ignorant sentient beings and bring them to maturity, Buddhas manifest, and the state of passing beyond sorrow is then revealed. The baskets of the Vinaya, Sutra, and Abhidharma, as well as the Samayas, i.e. Kriya, practice, i.e. Upa, and accomplishment, i.e. yoga, and the tantras of enlightened body, enlightened speech, and enlightened mind, extremely renowned throughout the ten directions, emanate from this secret essence tantra. The natural secret of this secret essence is the source for all baskets and classes of tantra, and the definitive ground to be ascertained. It is taught by the Buddha. Phenomena are merely designated through labels in the category of the meaning of relative truth, labeled through names and words. At the moment of teaching, those names and words are actually non-existent. Thus it is expressed. Then the secret itself of this indivisible mandala of the Tathagatas originates from that nature of Vajra enlightened body, speech, mind, qualities, and activities. Ah, ho! The shortcomings that form the basis for existence arise from the notion of a self. The body's abundance arising and ceasing of the six mind streams, the dwelling places, the confused wheel of suffering, and the like, Aside from these mistaken perceptions, there is nothing that exists externally for any other reason. The self-discerning awareness of enlightened mind primordially knows the selfless nature of emptiness. Without the objects to be conceptualized, and the conceptualist, the mind of wisdom is mastered. The astonishing kayas, enlightened speech, qualities, and pure lands, do not exist elsewhere. This nature itself appears in this way. These are the secret Vajra words. The manifestations of the six sages are countless in number, as well as the teachings given by all the Tathagatas. All of this is synthesized and known by the Tathagata himself. From the secret essence definitive nature just as it is, this completes the third chapter that establishes all phenomena. Then the wisdom intent of all the Tathagatas is united as one through the mode of evenness within Vajra space. The nature of phenomena has never wavered from this samadhi of primordial awakening. Phenomena are mere labels called the wheel of the garland of syllables that originate from Vajra enlightened body, speech, and mind. Ah, from an extremely static white ah, innumerable minute ahs radiate to appear and completely fill the ten directions. Then everything reabsorbs into the static ah, that does not increase or decrease. From that ah, the gatherings of names appear in blaze, and everything radiates and reabsorbs exactly like before. This is the wisdom cause for firmly bringing about the siddhis of the Vajra. Ah. Kaka, ga. Ga, na, sa, sha, za, za, nya, tra, thra, dra, dra, nya, ta, tha, da, da, nya, pa, fa, ba, pa, ma, ya, wa, ra, la, sha, ka, sa, ha, cha, e, e, u, u, e, e, o, o. Since all these syllables originate from the limitless ten directions of the six worlds, there are six modes of motion, extreme motion, and extremely great motion. 
Phenomena are, therefore, only designated through characteristics based upon names. Ho! Then all Tathagatas express the aphorism in this way. Ah is empty and not empty, and the middle way as well has never been conceptualized. Everything is only labeled. All Buddhas abide within this garland of syllables. Ah itself appears as diverse aspects. Then there are the 42, such as Ka and so forth. Through these sounds, every expression is subsumed. It is certain these are the fully manifest king. An astonishing marvel, this great manifestation of the 45 syllables is the source of all words and meanings without exception, and through them the profound various meanings are revealed and expressed. The mind is the insubstantial, intrinsic nature of a syllable. Although selfless, free from limitation, and non-conceptual, through various forms, colors, and names, many emanations manifest and are revealed. As the enlightened body, speech, and mind of the wisdom beings that have come throughout the ten directions in four times, these forty-five mandalas are complete from the head syllable to cha. The intrinsic nature of mind is the syllables. The syllables do not exist as substance. Since these non-conceptual syllables have various qualities, such as the great wheel of enlightened body, speech, and mind, as enlightened body, speech, and mind, this is astonishing as the most amazing, great, magical manifestation. This is the best of invocations. Written within basic space by space, they are thus referred to as syllables. The initial punctuation mark represents the unmistaken path. The circles are expressed as prajna. The punctuation stroke is the great method to distinguish the sentences. Ah indicates the unborn nature just as it is. Tha is the Vajra magical manifestation. Tra is the appearance of the magical manifestation. Dra is the wish-fulfilling magical manifestation. Dra is the perfectly pure magical manifestation. Nara is always the magical manifestation. Tha is the fully awakened matrix. Ta is the matrix of stability. Da is the shimmering matrix. Da is the all-embracing matrix. Na is the always attractive matrix. Ka is the supreme enlightened mind of the eyes. Ka is the supreme enlightened mind of the ears. Ga is the supreme enlightened mind of the nose. Ga is the supreme enlightened mind of the tongue. Nagya or Nya is that which destroys fixation even with enlightened mind. Tsa is the supreme enlightened body of the eyes. Tasha is the supreme enlightened body of the ears. Dza is the supreme enlightened body of the nose. Dza is the supreme enlightened body of the tongue. Nya is that which destroys fixation even with enlightened body. Pa is the supreme enlightened speech of the eyes. Fa is the supreme enlightened speech of the ears. Ba is the supreme enlightened speech of the nose. Ba is the supreme enlightened speech of the tongue. Ma is that which destroys fixation even with enlightened speech. Ya is born as perfectly pure. Wa is perfectly pure abiding. Ra is perfectly pure disintegrating. La is perfectly pure emptiness. Sha is the purity of no permanent existence. Ka is also not negated. Sa is selflessness free from limitations. Ha is without characteristics. Cha is the enlightened mind of wisdom compassion. 
E or A is however many gods exist, like particles of sand. E is however many demigods exist, like particles. U is however many humans exist, like particles. U is however many animals exist, like particles. E is however many deprived spirits exist, like particles. E is however many hell beings exist, like particles. O is that which destroys all. O is that which causes all to collapse. Through this great gathering wheel of syllables, all garlands of enlightened body, speech, and mind are subsumed. Thus, this is its breast. Ah, ho! Then the Tathagatas, including their assembly of consorts, in these secret invisible mandalas, originate from Vajra enlightened body, speech, mind, qualities, and activities. Ah, ho! These wheels are the cause of the joyful clouds of fully endowed bodhicitta, method and prajna, as the accomplished fruition of the victorious ones and the astonishing gathering of 42 names. The Samaya reveals that uncompounded appearances are the compounded Vajra mandala. Never departing from that, there is no choice but to appear. By the great strength of the combination of root causes and contributing circumstances, laughter emerges as ho. This is taught as secret Vajra words. Thus, having expressed this, all the Tathagatas become the wheel of syllables. From the secret essence, definitive nature just as it is, this completes the fourth chapter on the array of the wheel of the garland of syllables. Then, from the arrangement of the cloud-like wheel of syllables, the aphorism of the complete magical manifestation is expressed. This nature of mind has no basis, yet it is the source of all phenomena. The nature of mind is the intrinsic nature of syllables, and the syllables are the wish-fulfilling jewel of clouds. Since the magical manifestation mandala of the 42 syllables is fully perfected as the matrix mandala, all perfected mandalas throughout the ten directions in four times will be accomplished. This becomes nectar and serves to pacify all 404 diseases. Abundance emerges, and the lower realms are purified. No matter what appears, one is able to accomplish the transformation of this into something else. Space becomes solid, blazing Vajras, and even fire is incinerated, also becoming like the flow of water. The elements of the world are dispersed, the entire world is emptied and the sun and moon will fall from the sky. Through this samadhi, summoning, expelling, binding, releasing, curing, annihilating, defeating, and victories will occur. These self-appearing wisdom appearances of names, words, images, and so forth accomplish all wishes like a torch in the darkness, like alchemy transforming gold and like the method of medicine. Diligently make offerings to the one who reveals the path. By achieving clear realization, all mudras, mantra, and samaya are known without degeneration. Being endowed with the necessities will contribute to this accomplishment. To lack these will be futile and destructive. This essence of the supreme siddhis that is the inner realization of the victorious ones of the three times is an inexhaustible treasure that fulfills all wishes that emerge without increase or decrease. From the immaterial, material clouds will occur in varieties of manifestations. At the moment of appearing as material, the nature of all things is immaterial. Mastery of realization is the samadhi. 
Whoever fails to understand the non-referential will not see the space of phenomena. The material and immaterial will be defeated, and in doing so the non-conceptual will be known. This nature of mind that is groundless and baseless is not male, female, or neuter. It is devoid of characteristics and does not exist as classes in mind streams. Colors do not exist, shapes do not exist, and realms do not exist, as there is nothing whatsoever. This, the wisdom of basic space, just as it is, is the root cause of all mudras of method. From the method, the secondary method is the inconceivable method. From that which is not differentiated, it is differentiated. The internal as well as the external inconceivable mandalas are the dynamic strength of wisdom, the supreme mudra of the fearless Samantabhadra. Whoever, by resting in equipose, has tamed the mind that is like a drunken elephant, will, through familiarity in mantra and mudra, achieve the most amazing siddhi. Thus, having expressed this, the Tathagata himself is pleased by this spectacle. From the secret essence definitive nature as it is, this completes the fifth chapter on the Samadhi accomplishing the magical manifestation. Then the Tathagata himself, whose intrinsic nature is neither singular nor plural, and all of the Tathagatas throughout the ten directions and the six realms, express the aphorism in this way with the intention to bring forth the mandala of the greatness of the Tathagata himself. The designated wisdom of the four directions in the center, this inconceivable, spontaneously present mandala, is, for a practitioner who realizes the great perfection, utilized as the great self-originating mandala. There are the four spokes of the wheel, including the circular rim. The four sides are adorned with four gateways and porticos and the shape is entirely square. There are varieties of musical instrumentation, like massing cloud formations. Adorned with the 42 mandalas, the deities are seated upon great thrones of lions, elephants, horses, peacocks, and garudas. The sun, moon, lotuses, and precious jewels in the posture of perfect Buddhas and sattvas. The kings and queens on the wheel, beginning with the right, are the observer, the hearer, the partaker of sense, and the partaker of flavors, i.e. the sakvas, including their assembly of queens. Upon the square pattern are the ones who see, hear, smell, and taste, abiding along with their queens. At the outer perimeter are the six sages, and at the front and back it is taught that the object and subject reside. The conquerors are at the four gates, abiding with their assembly of queens. The principal ones and consorts are ablaze with the hand emblems of Vajra, wheel, jewel, lotus, sword, and bells. The sattvas hold an utpala, flower, a naga branch, and so forth. With stunning demeanors, their consorts hold pleasing objects. They are various colors, such as blue, white, golden, red, green, and so forth. Soft, flexible, vital, supple, and youthful in appearance, possessing the majestic splendor of being vibrant, shimmering, and spontaneously attractive. A great gathering of light rays radiates, and blazing chains of fire flare and pervade without center or circumference. This inconceivable mandala is spontaneously present. This kaya of the supreme maha mudra, although never wavering from basic space just as it is, is the totally liberated rupa kaya. In order to tame individual beings, a variety of kayas appear according to their needs. The way these are revealed is as magical or mirage-like 
while the nature itself does not waver from the space of phenomena. While never wavering, when these varieties appear, the various different aspects arise similar to the individual classes. Although never departing from the essential nature, they, i.e. the Nirmanakayas, appear individually by the power of karma. For example, like a mirror or the moon in water. At that time, to all six classes of beings, they fully manifest in forms to purify negativity. For all monastic practitioners, they manifest in the forms of foe destroyers. For all solitary realizers, in the manner of being alone like a rhinoceros. Furthermore, among these traditions, according to the stages of the Supreme Vehicle, in the supreme place of the unsurpassed Akanishvita, the Kaya abides in the manner of Vairokana. To the entire assembly of Bodhisattvas, he does not teach through speech like the Nirmanakaya does. Through the Kaya, the entire doctrine is revealed and understood. Like the way one's face is reflected in a mirror, imperfections become apparent and are removed. When the retinue gazes upon the kaya, their unfathomable obstructions to awakening appear upon the kaya like in a mirror. Then the stains of the ten grounds will be gradually removed, and perfectly pure, unsurpassed awakening will be attained. The dharmakaya cannot be fathomed or expressed. The sambhogakaya is inexhaustible like a treasure trove of jewels. The millions of Nirmanakayas are inconceivable, replete with all major and minor marks and signs. This mandala is always the wisdom domain. Even the two great accumulations are united as the great perfection. Method, prajna, and the supreme ground, these and so forth, are all beyond imagination. The kaya is without birth or death, like the auspicious cross, abiding for the field of all deluded sentient beings as an inexhaustible treasury. This kaya holds vajra awareness. All phenomena are inseparable as the kaya of evenness. All phenomena are the kaya of omniscient wisdom. At that time, the five kayas are also fully achieved. Thus, having expressed this, inexpressible mandalas clearly appear equal in number to the particles of the pure lands throughout the ten directions of the unceasingly limitless six realms. Then, from these indivisible mandalas of the Tathagatas, queens, and their assemblies, this secret of the Tathagata himself originates from Vajra enlightened body, speech, and mind, qualities, and activities. Ah ho! The non conceptual, apprehended, and apprehending mind are unfathomable and inconceivable. The myriad mandalas of wisdom's self awareness are ineffable, pervading all that is evenness and unevenness. All pervasive basic space is without pervading. Primordially ever luminous, the fully manifest mandala is unelaborate. Saying ho expresses the secret Vajra words. From the secret essence definitive nature just as it is, this completes the sixth chapter on the manifestation of the mandala. Then this originates from the Vajra enlightened body, speech, and mind of all the Tathagatas, including their assembly of queens. Dram Bisho Bishudhe Hung Benzar Drik Om Zina Zik Soratna Drik Ong Ahro Lik Ha Trajna Drik Mum Dati Shori Lam Dekarati Mam Boharati Pam Ragarati Tam Benzarati, Ching He Radzaya, Trang Agarbaya, 
Hring Ha Hung Padma Padma Zing Kuru Pana Hri Hung Lase Sama Tom Trom Mele Samaya Ho Hri Gurti Raga Hong Ab Nurti Ragiyami Me Darani Soha Tilam Nisa Rambaya Soha Hung So Radzaya Soha Mum Shri An Radyaya Soha Za Dupe Trawa Sha Hung Pupe Awa Sha Bam Dipam Sukini Ho Genhe Tasita Ho Hung Yamanta Trita Pet Hung Binanta Trita Pet Hung Padmanta Trita Pet Hung Trajnanta Trita Pet O Maha Benzar Dharmoha Trodhi Sorhi Zolani Hung Pet Om Maha Ratna Dharo Maha Trodhi Shuri Zolani Hung Pet Om Maha Padma Dharo Maha Trodhi Shuri Zolani Hung Pet Om Maha Karma Dharo Maha Trodhi Shuri Zolani Hung Pet Hung 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 Benzar Tsita Hung A A A Benzar Bhadra Samanta A Om Mune Trang Soha Om Mune Trang Soha Om Mune Sang Soha Om Mune Tram Soha Om Mune Trang Soha Om Mune Ye Soha Om E Hai Bhagawan Maha Karunika Drishaya Ho Samaya Tom Za Hong Bam Ho Om Ah Hung Soha Baba Baba Ba Za 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 sa 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 ma 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 ya 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 am a hung so ha om the king of wisdom's great superb enlightened body speech mind qualities and activities unite with me at this moment within the great mudra om benzar samaya hung om benzar samaya tom Om Benzar Samaya Ho, Za Hung Bam Ho. Through these recitations, it is known, highly celebrated, and forever celebrated that these mandalas of enlightened speech fill the ten directions of the six realms. Then the conqueror, as the subject Vajra, i.e. Samantabhadra, and the object Vajra, i.e. Samantabhadri, dissolve into the indivisible mandala. Then from the great lord of all the Tathagatas of the ten directions and four times, this secret mantra called gathering great splendor and wisdom emerges from the Vajra enlightened body, speech, and mind, the magical manifestation matrix. O Maha Shunyata Jnana Benzar Sobhava Atmako Hong Om Maha Sanyata Jnana Benzar Sabhava Atmako Hang. Om Maha Edarshana Jnana Benzar Sabhava Atmako Hang. Om Maha Trataya Bek Jnana Benzar Sabhava Atmako Hang. Om Samanta Jnana Benzar Sabhava Atmako Hang. Om Maha Trataya Nutrana Jnana Benzar Sabhava Atmako Hang. Om Sarva Tathagata Mahakaya Benzar Sabhava Atmako Hung. Om Sarva Tathagata Mahawaka Benzara Sabhava Atmako Hung. Om Sarva Tathagata Mahatsita Benzar Sabhava Atmako Hung. Om Sarva Tathagata Maha Anuraga Benzar Sabhava Atmako Hung. Om Sarva Tathagata Maha Pudza Benzar Sobhava Atmako Hang. Through this recitation, the blessings dissolve, transform, and blaze with light. E Maho. These superb, astonishing phenomena are the speech of all fully enlightened Buddhas. This transcends all sounds, names, and words. Yet varieties of sounds clearly emerge. Each word is a branch of the mandala, inconceivably pervading everywhere. All of the individual languages, words, and names can be heard as the supreme mudra of enlightened speech. 
from the supreme tantra of the magical manifestation matrix, the meaning of enlightened speech emerges to ensure benefit. Concerning this, since all phenomena are abiding like a lotus, whatever sound is expressed is the path to either liberation or samsara. That is supreme enlightened speech. All languages of the higher and lower vehicles and imprudent beings are, without exception, synthesized as awakened Vajra speech. That nature completely resounds in the ten directions. Within non-attachment, this sound is taught. At the moment of being taught, this is inexpressible. This inexpressible nature is the varieties of sounds resonating for everyone that can be understood individually. Saying numbness is dispelled, as an example, through this soul speech, every teaching will be comprehended. This is the king of supreme enlightened speech. Although the higher and lower vehicles are inconceivable except for the nature just as it is, nothing is taught. Through the skillful means of taming, it is heard individually. Just as all scripture categories were taught by the Buddha, from the perspective of the nature as it is, this was never taught. This is the enlightened awareness speech without syllables. And although not originating from the tip of the Buddha's tongue, by the blessing of compassionate enlightened speech, the varieties of meanings, the varieties of meanings are clearly present to the individual beings. This clarity is supreme Vajra speech, as the entire source of benefit for beings. Although this enlightened speech never departs from being within that nature, it is, for example, like the sounds of an echo. From the secret essence, definitive nature, just as it is, this completes the seventh chapter that synthesizes the mandala and secret mantra. Then all Tathagatas express the aphorism, all limbs are blessed as the spontaneously present mandala. All phenomena are this fully perfected magical manifestation matrix, the mudra of supreme awakening. This secret definitive nature, just as it is, the mudra of the essence, difficult to transcend. Regarding the sun mandala and syllables of Akshobhaya and the moon mandala and the syllables of Ratnasambhava, by uniting each five fingers, they connect and become the cause for the mudras. Connecting the tips of both om and mum, the tips of the eight syllables cross and connect. Equally united with all the victorious ones, this mudra generates exaltation. The four syllables are hidden and the middle finger is extended at the heart. A vajra blazes at the tip of the extended hung. Gathered at the moon, the syllables are hidden, and the bell is rung. In the manner of embracing, the bell is placed upon the thigh. The four syllables are hidden, the middle finger is extended at the heart. At the tip of the middle finger, with the sound of mum, the ringing bell blazes. The five syllables of the sun unite with the consort. The consort bows and gazes with a smile. The four syllables are hidden, and the forefinger is extended to the heart. At the tip of the extended forefinger, Om is a blazing wheel. Upon the moon, the syllables are gathered and hidden, and the bell is rung. By the gesture of embracing, the Dharma Mudra is executed. The four syllables are hidden, and extended forefinger is placed at the heart. At the tip of the extended forefinger, Lam, the ringing bell, blazes. The five syllables of the sun embrace the consort. The consort bows and gazes with a smile. The four syllables are hidden and the thumb is extended at the heart. At the tip of the extended thumb, So, is a blazing jewel. Upon the moon, the syllables are gathered and hidden 
and the bell is rung. By the gesture of embracing, the Dharma Mudra is executed. The four syllables are hidden and the thumb is extended at the heart. At the tip of the extended thumb, Mom, the ringing bell, blazes. The five syllables of the sun embrace the consort. The consort bows and gazes with a smile. The four syllables are hidden. The ring finger is extended at the heart. At the tip of the extended ring finger, Ang or Ang is a blazing lotus. Upon the moon, the syllables are gathered and hidden, and the bell is rung. By the gesture of embracing, the Dharma Mudra is executed. The four syllables are hidden, and the ring finger is extended at the heart. At the tip of the extended ring finger, Vam, the ringing bell blazes. The five syllables of the sun embrace the consort. The consort bows and gazes with a smile. The four syllables are hidden, and the little finger is extended at the heart. At the tip of the extended little finger, Ha, is a blazing sword. Upon the moon, the syllables are gathered and hidden, and the bell is rung. By the gesture of embracing the consort, the Dharma Mudra is executed. The four syllables are hidden, and the little finger is extended at the heart. At the tip of the extended little finger, Tom, the ringing bell blazes. The five syllables of the sun embrace the consort. The consort bows and gazes with a smile. The hand emblems are an Utpala, Naga sprig, and so forth. A jeweled sprout, blazing sword, white lotus, blazing vajra, dharma chakra, precious sprig, beautiful form, mirror, jeweled garland, vina, accomplished dancer, flower garland, supreme incense, butter lamp, scented water, and so forth. Activity is embraced and the dharma mudra is executed. All males' heads are tilted and the females are showing veneration. Concurrent with the previous great mudras, they embrace within indivisible space. The mudras for the wrathful ones at the four entranceways are that they appear brandishing a vajra club of suppression marked with nuri, a coiled snake skull of suppression, a crossed vajra that functions to suppress, a hook, lasso, handcuffs, and bell. All abide at the four entranceways, showing veneration and united as previously explained. The various mudras of the six sages, when synthesized, are six mudras. Their consorts are the non-conceptual space of phenomena. From the evenness of Samantabhadra, wisdom radiates. The consort is in the perfection of evenness, full lotus posture. There are further alternative mudras. Moreover, there are the mudras of the Tathagatas, or at least the Vajra Palms. The supreme gathering of the great mudra is that, by possessing method and prajna, without moving or arousing, every activity abides within the great mudra. The limbs are adorned with the forty-two deities, of those, the branches of the radiance itself come to be the threefold emanation of 42. Endowed in this way as the supreme principal ones, the victors and the supreme victor, and also the blazing radiant light of twelve gatekeepers and six sages. In that way and so forth, they are inconceivable. In the unimaginable ten directions in the four times, they individually reveal themselves for the purpose of those to be tamed. They fully appear according to the individual aspiration of those in all higher and lesser vehicles, all perverted heretics, the unimaginable and a vast assembly, including all peaceful and wrathful. Just as a single dancer himself, although not prearranged, reveals various forms in brief, all mudras cannot be defined in a single way by saying this is it. Multiplying from two to three, all movements and execution of mudras are the essential nature. In short, all movements and gyrations abide as a matter of course as the great mudra. Even in abiding itself, nothing exists to abide. 
This speech is taught by the supremely pure one himself. From the secret essence, definitive nature just as it is, having blessed all branches as the mandala, this completes the eighth chapter of the elaborate mudra. Then the Tathagata takes great delight and by resting in union arranges the mandala of secret Vajra Samaya, and the aphorism is expressed. The extremely subtle Supreme Samaya is the great mudra at the palm of the hand. This sacred enlightened mind mandala is the measurement of four finger breadths. The nature of five grains, five types of incense, five jewels, five essences, five medicines, and five nectars is total evenness. By knowing this, the line is drawn. Within is the center possessing spokes. Outside the four spokes, including the rim of the wheel, is the square-patterned palace adorned with porticos and entranceways. Upon the sun and moon, the size of thumbnails is a lotus seat the size of a split pea. Upon the syllable, i.e. hung, the size of a mustard seed, draw the mudra the size of a sesame seed. Arrange varieties of man-made cloth, ornaments, garlands, drink, and flavorful foods surrounding. An accumulation of songs and words of praise, dancing, and clouds of musical offerings are perfectly offered. The consorts, the enticing females, and the female sattvas are offered according to whatever is desired. The fire pit is endowed with characteristics such as shapes and colors, transforming into the mouth of the deity. Agni is invoked and all types of delicious food, drink, and the offerings of the four activities are perfectly presented, just as with the peaceful mandala. For the wrathful mandalas, those who are trained in the extremely subtle key points of samadhi, must even please all inconceivable mandalas just like in the sadhana. This must be discerned by using common sense. The offering of the great mudra is that from one's mind, like a gathering of cloud-like wish-fulfilling jewels, the ten directions are the pure lands of the Buddhas. Supple, smooth, and blissful to the touch, the multifaceted jeweled ground is beautifully adorned with relief patterns. The source of all desirables blazes as heaps of jewels. Beautifully shaped ponds with coolness and supreme flavor, various jeweled palaces, adornments, and forests of wish-granting trees, the sound of lovely melodious songs and verses, canopies, victory banners, parasols, and garments, long necklaces, bracelets, and anklets, varieties of comestibles and drinks, and all beautifully adorned with their own particular styles. Gods and goddesses equal to the particles in the atmosphere encompassing all regions of space in the ten directions, with unimaginable undulating dancing and so forth, are extensively offered to all mandalas. Based on whether the samadhi of fortunate practitioners is clear, there are gradual developers or those with instantaneous realization. Offerings are made equal to the space of phenomena. Meditate upon this as the offering of the great mudra. With a consort either blessed or possessing clear samadhi, given that the trichiliocosm fits within a mustard seed, the mandala is invoked from this basic space, i.e. the secret place of the consort, and offerings are made. Through this, all deities are pleased, and the Siddhi of the Supreme Samaya is attained. When the holder of immeasurable qualities makes offerings, the mandala of the Buddhas is pleased without exception. All beings in the three realms will be pervaded by great joy. Through stable familiarity with the magical manifestation matrix, the Sugatas of the Ten Directions and Four Times, and the mandalas of those who have awakened without exception, 
will be actualized for all beings throughout the three realms. All phenomena, including body, speech, and mind, do not abide anywhere, and there is nothing to conceptualize like an optical illusion. Through union with space, meditate upon space. Having completed all activities, the Lord of Awareness enters, and then the disciples must enter. Then those disciples of supreme good, fortune, offer whatever are the most cherished and pleasing, such as the kingdom, one's own body, offspring, spouse, and the most precious possessions. If the five aspects of the desirables are offered to the Lord, this constitutes offering to all mandalas. Needless to say, this constitutes offering to all deities of the present mandala. All faults will be purified. If there is faith, diligence, and perfect realization of fearless conduct within the disciples, gradually confer the benefiting and enabling empowerments, and through compassion the disciples are held so their minds do not become spoiled. Otherwise, with the hands perfectly folded, upon the lap of the great mudra the mandala is the size of a thumb. Nevertheless, according to the sadhana, those proficient with the method must confer empowerment. Otherwise, on a very even surface, draw the mandala the length of a cubit, the size of a human body, or the size of three human body lengths. With a furba, thread, colored sand, and an attractive companion adorned with lovely clothing and ornaments, the complete sadhana of marking lines must be performed with concentration by one who is an expert. If not that, then a mandala of 16 cubits, 20 or 25, must be drawn. Visualize all five mandalas of the families, and all images indicating enlightened body, speech, and mind are arranged. Otherwise, visualize the various mandalas of the Buddhas to be furlong, a mile, or encompassing inconceivable space. In order to show this to those who are deluded and unable to see, draw this with twenty-five or five colors. This application of the colors must be according to the ritual for taming. In the infinitely supreme play of Samadhi, the syllables, and, in addition, the seats in the essence, or the mudras of fully endowed enlightened body, speech, and mind, are generated. All of this is the Buddha's commitment. So astonishing, superb blessing will be accomplished. Creating mudra with soil and so forth, if the stages of perfect freedom can be attained, it is needless to mention the purification through the perfectly pure wisdom of this mind. The great nature of the mandala of all directions and times is non-conceptual. From this mandala of enlightened mind, all mandalas are invoked. In the mandala of inseparable self-appearances, there is union through the characteristic of the manner of entering. The Buddhas have come from all directions and times recited prayers, hence the mandala is fully complete. Becoming the close heir is the supreme Samaya. The wish-granting trees, precious wish-fulfilling jewels, and all these things that come about have no true substantial existence, yet they are the steadfast merit of one's mind. These astonishing phenomena of the magical manifestation have not come from nor existed elsewhere. The prajna that is unwavering through methods occurs during practice such as this. Because the nature as it is of the space of prajna becomes the mudra of method, the play of wisdom takes delight in wisdom. This play of wisdom also manifests as a replication. The victorious ones directly appear to protect, and even like the blessings that appear, the brilliant splendor of the potential to engage in activities is the supremely potent magical vajra. 
completing the five rituals, fully completing the five necessities, perfecting the five branches of mantra without decline, and engaging with great perseverance in six months, twelve, fourteen, or sixteen, a sacred immortal Vidyadhara will be accomplished. Sixteen lifetimes after that, there will be the spontaneous perfection of the five kayas, as this wisdom, vital essence, nature that appears inconceivably and supremely limitless. In the fully perfected ten directions and four times, this unimaginable pure land is perfectly pure, and this celestial palace is free from dimensions. There are ornaments of the wheel, musical instruments, and all unimaginable mandalas without exception. Seeing this, the ground is practically attained, and benefit occurs through vast enlightened speech. This harmonious wisdom is self-appearing. The nature, just as it is, is without center or limit, and is free from being singular or plural. Even the Buddhas themselves do not see this self-originating wisdom that arises without abiding. This wisdom is not other than space, so designated misconceptions are perfectly pure, and given that beings and wisdom are connected through great compassion, the six classes of beings appear at times and in realms without exception. The mandala of exaltation is the union of male and female, or the five-colored sand mandala. By this arrangement, when faithful disciples fully enter, pleasing, desirable siddhis will be equally attained. If this wisdom of equal fortune is pursued, siddhis will swiftly transpire, and it is certain that the most astonishing supreme siddhi will occur. If one practices without faith, samaya will be damaged, and there will be ruin. Thus, the aphorism is expressed. From the secret essence, definitive nature, just as it is, this completes the ninth chapter on the secret Samaya of the Vajra Mandala. Then, the conqueror, in a state of great joy, enters into the Samadhi called giving empowerment to become the ruler. And in this way, the aphorism is expressed. From the mudra of prajna and method, the bliss of the syllable and the rest are visualized to flow through the path of the vajra and fill the lotus. This dissolves through the tips to transform as the mandala. In the celestial palace wheel of the listening ears, the nature of the vital essence is visualized. From the supreme gathering mudra of Tram, the mandala of Ratna clearly emanates and dissolves. Tram is the secret, great secret, and supreme secret. All secrets must be received through listening. Except for analysis, this secret meaning should not be explained to others. Within the celestial palace wheel of the visualization is the nature of the visualized vital essence. From the supreme garlands of syllables, the mandala of the family is visualized, emanates, and dissolves. Om, great heirs of the victorious ones of the three times, maintain Vajra enlightened body, speech, and mind. Please all the victorious ones with offerings, and may union with all the victorious ones be achieved. At the celestial palace of the wheel of the hands, the nature of the visualized vital essence becomes the supreme gathering mudra of hung. By vividly generating the mandala of enlightened activity, the wisdom being emanates and dissolves. Om, you are Vajra activity. Hence, accomplish all activity without exclusion. By radiating and gathering all messengers, your intentions will be fulfilled. 
In the celestial palace of the wheel that expresses words is the nature of the clear vital essence. From the supreme gathering of the mudra of Hri, the visualization of the mandala of Dharma is visualized, emanates, and dissolves. Om, by the unsurpassed nectar of Dharma, those with faith must be satisfied. Proclaim the secret according to those of superb, middling, and dull faculties, but not otherwise. Within the wheel of the celestial palace that functions to move is the nature of the radiantly clear, vital essence. Meditate that all syllables, such as hung, om, so, ang, and ha, become the five mandalas in the encircling wrathful ones. Om. The great Vajra enlightened body, speech, and mind of all the Buddhas of the ten directions in four times, creator of all mandalas, please bestow the siddhis of all mandalas. Failing to please the Vajra master and not receiving empowerment for those who attempt to listen and so forth, not only will there be no result, there will be ruin. If the crown, diadem, garland, armor, victory banner, mudra, parasol, vase, or vase, food and drink in the five essence empowerments are conferred, from that day onward as an heir of the victorious one, the lower realms will no longer exist, and there will be immortality and abundant happiness. One will become a master of the higher realms of liberation. Thus it is taught. From the secret essence, definitive nature, just as it is, this completes the tenth chapter on giving empowerment. Then the Tathagata takes great delight by entering into the Samadhi of Union called the Mastery of the King of the Magical Manifestation Matrix. And in this way the aphorism is expressed. Through the four modes of perfect realization, the single cause, the mode of the syllables, the blessing and actual realization, everything is fully perfected as the great monarch. All limbs, organs, and consciousness are not independent aspects and should be understood as Om. Meditate upon this as the mandala of the Sambhogakaya. Alternatively, meditate upon this as the wrathful mandala. Form, sound, smell, taste, touch, and the like are not just ordinary aspects. This should be understood as mum. Meditate upon this mandala of consorts. Alternatively, meditate upon the mandala of the wrathful females. Regarding the gathering of massing clouds of clothing, ornaments, food, drink, song, speech, and dance, and by understanding this as hung, to completely partake pleases the mandala, the source of astonishing cities. Regarding the goddess, Nagini, in the female of low caste, by making distinctions or without making these distinctions, through the approach, the close approach, the accomplishment, and the great accomplishment in the lotus mandala of the female consort, the mandala of enlightened mind of exaltation emanates. Through the supreme gift of equal satisfaction, without exception, the entire mandala of Buddhas dissolves. The accomplishment essence of the sun and moon is received within the mandala by the Vajra tongue. Traveling through space, becoming lucid, blazing, life expectancy and others are attained. Ultimately, one will become a sovereign of the ground, wish-fulfilling clouds, i.e. clouds of Dharma. The object to tame from the supreme and secondary realms is placed upon a sun and moon by a skillful practitioner. With Vajra pride, meditate upon the movement of the hands. Completely purified, the consciousness becomes a hung. By, 
By dissolving into space, the mudra blazes and becomes the splendid kaya blazing with radiant light. Meditate upon total victory, i.e. samantabhadra, above the crown as an astonishing method for liberating the lower realms. The primordial unborn nature just as it is resembles the magical appearance of optical illusions. Even while engaging in the activity of union and liberation, ultimately there is not even a particle's worth of negativity accumulated. The universe, inhabitants, and mind streams are realized to be perfectly pure. In these, the two, evenness and surpassing evenness. The mandala is the pure land of Samantabhadra. Through whatever activities, great accumulations will occur. A practitioner who has not allowed the branch, Samayas, to decline and who is endowed with substances and a complete understanding of rituals, will certainly achieve the goal through the Gana Chakra Mandala. The union of five deities with their five sources of bliss is an arrangement of the group formation of five. Meditate upon the ten wrathful males and ten wrathful females appearing in the aspect of a wheel. The Tathagata Vajra and Lotus families of enlightened body, speech, and mind are to be meditated upon as all the deities of the group formation of three, including the gathering of wrathful ones. Among families, the family of Samantabhadra is the principal family. The enlightened mind of the family of mind is the supreme enlightened mind. Meditate upon this group of deities as a single formation, including the gathering of the wrathful ones. Through the great gathering of male and female wrathful ones, messengers, emissaries, oath-bound ones, those who follow the command, and so forth, the activities of Siddhis will be accomplished. The Siddhi of a mantra holder practitioner is to abide spontaneously present in evenness and perfection. Conduct itself is completely devoid of obstruction, and all phenomena are primordially inseparable. Within the Vajra family, all mandalas are included. Meditating that the radiant light is ablaze, this dissolves in the manner of non-attachment and becomes indivisible as the great mudra. Conversely, the enlightened body, speech, and mind are all the mandalas of enlightened body, speech, and mind without exception. By visualizing through samadhi, the radiation of light dissolves into indivisible space. This becomes the attainment of the supreme siddhi of avidyadhara. The blazing mandala is accomplished without exception. Dispelling the suffering of the passions, beings are led to take rebirth in the Vajra family. The authentic siddhis of a mantra holder are to meditate upon all five mandalas of method and prajna, and the garland of wrathful ones. In the manner of non-attachment, emanations radiate in the aspect of light rays. They dissolve indivisibly, and the essence of Supreme Siddhi is attained. A practitioner of method and prajna should meditate upon the Tathagatas and their consorts. They should also meditate upon the sattvas and female sattvas. Each respective mantra, mudra, and aspect of samadhi are to be correctly and distinctly visualized. The place and necessities must be adequate and abundant, and the mind completely committed. First, whatever commitment is made must be maintained accordingly. Without falling prey to discouragement and sloth or becoming complacent, and if one practices free of doubt, then all mandalas will be accomplished. The supreme, sacred, secret vajra will be achieved. The number of days for the practice and the astrological connections should be explained according to the Tantra. Thus, the secret Vajra manifests as words. 
Hence, the Tathagata himself brings forth the subject to the Tathagata himself. From the secret essence, definitive nature, just as it is, this completes the eleventh chapter on the mandala of the Gana Chakra. Then, in a state of great delight, the Tathagata radiates clouds of manifestation. By resting in the samadhi that is an ornamental array, the aphorism is expressed in this way. In the unwavering samadhi of the fully perfected mandala of the magical manifestation matrix, there are mudra movements of dancing and swaying and through that there will be the ability to travel underground and fly in the path of the sky. By the mudra of the sound of songs and words, the siddhi of dharma will be attained. Through the mudra of donning ornaments and garments, the blazing king that cannot be defeated is accomplished. Through the mudra of food and beverages, the wish-fulfilling kaya and ambrosia will be accomplished. Through the mudra of Ali and Kali, all siddhis will be fulfilled. The mantric formula that unites the characteristics of knowing and engaging ripens as the result through root causes and contributing circumstances. Whoever develops this potential and power will be well known as a Vidyadhara throughout the pure lands of the victorious ones, although they take immaculate rebirth as humans, gods, and Brahma. In particular, they abide upon the tenth ground, since they have fully perfected the paramitas. Method and prajna are the supreme method. The supreme prajna of the superlative is the difference between the ten and the three grounds. The distinction between cause and result is spontaneous perfection. At the seat of the sun and moon in the extremely pure mandala of space, meditate upon the king of wisdom in union. The entire mandala of the victorious ones is meditated upon without exception no matter when or where in the four times as well as the ten directions, the fully perfected Buddha will not be discovered. The nature of the mind is the fully perfected Buddha. Hence, do not search for Buddha elsewhere. Through fully uniting with the mandala of Samantabhadra, all mandalas are accomplished. Even the faults, additions, and omissions of sadhana practice will be purified to become faultless. The aphorism is thus expressed, and the manifest offering clouds completely please all the Tathagatas. From the secret essence, definitive nature just as it is, this completes the twelfth chapter on accomplishing the gathering of merit and wisdom. Then, as the gathering of the embodiment of all Tathagatas of the Ten Directions in Four Times, the Vajra Mandalas of Enlightened Body, Speech, and Mind, Samantabhadra, takes great delight. The Samaya of the spontaneously present great perfection that is the primordial nature of all phenomena is a great secret. By resting in the Samadhi of the essential clouds, those with fortune are placed on the grounds, and the aphorism is expressed. Failure to understand, incorrect understanding, partial understanding, and not perfectly understanding, taming, the wisdom intent, the secret, and the meaning of the natural secret are clearly indicated through phases relying on combined words designated by the sounds of syllables, revealing the meaning that is obscured and hidden within the texts. This abides in the enlightened mind of a Vajra master. Through the mandala of the indwelling mandala, meditate on the mandala with the mandala. The mandala originates from the mandala. The mandala of enlightened mind is the supreme mandala, the secret vital essence mandala of basic space. 
the elements of prajna are the Buddha nature as the consort. The great elements are the Buddha nature of the families. The awakened mind is the Vajra assembly. All organs, objects, time, and awareness are the mandala of the always excellent, i.e. Samantabhadra. The surpassing great holder of immeasurable qualities sees with the five wisdoms of enlightened mind. Through the union of the vital essences and the sound of wisdom exaltation, great wisdom ecstasy is offered. Through this immaculate merit there are the supreme, self-appearing, magical wisdom manifestations of mandalas. This secret vital essence nature of space is the nature of all the Buddhas. Fully awakened in the ten directions in four times, seeing this nature of enlightened body, speech, mind, qualities, and activities without exception, is mastery of the supreme and sacred. When abiding in the mandala, this mandala's nature is the spontaneously present mandala of completion. All mandalas, without exception, are complete as ornaments. From the union of the mandalas of the Sambhogakaya, the compassionate mandalas fully emerge. As protectors who tame the mandalas of directions and times, by liberating the illusory mandalas, the mandalas of non-existent object and subject are engaged. As the mandala of perfected wisdom, the self-originating and always sublime, is spontaneously present through the union of hearing, contemplation, and meditation. This is the supreme Samaya that all Buddhas never depart from. Whoever shows interest in this by revering the mandalas without exception throughout all times and directions will become known as a close heir. For as many kalpas as there are particles within the pure lands, practitioners must train in order to become proficient. The result of revering all mandalas without exception is this great secret. In the ten directions of the six worlds, the victorious ones of all mandalas without a single exception, who have previously come and who are present, have perfected the five kayas by attaining this path. All those of the present and those to become vidyadharas in the future will become spontaneously present Vidyadharas through this path. Among the mandalas of the victorious ones without exception, except for this definitive great secret that takes the result as the path, another definitive secret path has never existed. If sought after even by the victorious ones, this will not be discovered. This is the supreme great seal of all tantras. Becoming knowledgeable through study, contemplation, and meditation, all those with the eyes of prajna must sustain this. Entrust this to suitable recipients who are noble and have stable faith. This should be given to those who give up their bodies, and abundance must never be transmitted to others. If this is given to those who are deluded and have no control, there will be an untimely conclusion to their lives, and they will burn and be tormented indefinitely. Thus, the Tathagata himself expresses the aphorism to the Tathagata himself. From the secret essence, definitive nature just as it is, this completes the 13th chapter on the extremely secret, essential Upadesha. Then the Lord of all Tathagatas sings the song of rapture to the mandala, Om, the wisdom mandala of the great vital essence, is perfect throughout the ten directions and four times, as a mandala of merit and gathering of kayas of appearances and emptiness, 
the vital essence is perfectly complete. Ho! Om, this Vajra merit is the great vital essence, endowed as the wisdom mandala of the Vajra. The infinite greatness of Vajra sound is the Vajra monarch, the great vital essence. Ho! Om, the great perfection of enlightened body, speech, mind, qualities, and enlightened activities is the primordial, spontaneously perfected Samantabhadra. This vast assembly is the great vital essence, Ho. Om, magical manifestations are non-conceptual in the space of evenness, always infinite, radiating multitudes of multicolored light, always infinite, dissolving spontaneously, they are the diverse greatness of enlightened body, speech, and mind, Ho. Om, in the ten directions of the universe, as numerous as particles, all deeds of the victorious ones are as numerous as particles, as inconceivable emanations equal to particles that are instantaneously, spontaneously present, Ho. Om. All mandalas are enlightened body, speech, and mind, without exception. The great nature of enlightened body, speech, and mind is always pervaded by enlightened body, speech, and mind. This enlightened body, speech, and mind is the great vital essence, Ho. Thus, this aphorism is proclaimed from the secret essence, definitive nature, just as it is. This completes the fourteenth chapter that delights the lords of the mandala. Then the great lord of all the Tathagatas, who is the nature of all the Buddhas, is fully manifest as the wrathful mandala. One may wonder why. With conceptual delusion concerning the self and compulsory attachment for the designated, those who lack the authentic path without understanding the obscured secret, will fully engage in the hidden secret. Deluded about causes and results, the coarse seeds of existence are cast. Without interruption, rebirth is taken in the extremely hot hells of Avicii. Tormented by the exceedingly intense suffering of heat, they will think, Compared to this, it, i.e. the cold hell, is extremely frigid. If only I could be born there. At that moment, pounded by incredible cold, the body will crack like a lotus, and intense suffering will be endured. Hence there is the suffering of the eight hells, such as intense heat in the rest. In all of these eight, such as extremely cold and so forth, Transference to the worlds is experienced for 12,000 great kalpas. Once that result is exhausted, the deprived spirits are tormented by the suffering of hunger and thirst. All desirable things appear as displeasing. All things transform into various coarse and harmful substances. And once again everything vanishes. Extremely emaciated and dry, their abdomens, limbs, and faculties are impaired and disproportionate. Rebirth must be taken for six great kalpas of time. Then, when the ripening of coarse karmic obstructions gradually diminishes, there will be a reconnection based on the existence of previous causes to be reborn, as an extremely unruly and wrathful great cannibal-deprived spirit. A single body can have a hundred heads of various animal heads. A hundred bodies may have a single head and diverse bodies with many limbs. The limbs can have diverse shapes and are holding many harmful weapons. The retinues include many various intimidating forms with myriad frightening screams that petrify all beings with their forms, roars, odors, and breaths. 
With enormous frightening black winds, their breaths, both hot and cold, disturb every region, sending the four hundred and four illnesses. Their powers weaken memory, as well as render others insane. The classes of the Nagas, classes of the demigods, and classes of the gods, all the way up to Brahmayika, Abhaspara, Subhakirchna, and Burhatpala, are overcome. Previously, the Rudra relied upon a spiritual guide. Through the strength of that, Mahotara saw through his omniscience the suffering of beings, and by enacting compassion revealed the deeds of taming. Then, from the Tathagata's great Vajra, arrangement of the magical manifestation matrix in the ten directions of the six realms, where the Rudra is the lord of the three planes of existence, he shows the authentic presence of taming through great pride. The great nature of Vajra enlightened body, speech, and mind of all the Tathagatas. The Bhagawan takes great delight by abiding in the evenness of the Samadhi of the king of the magical manifestation matrix and radiates great clouds of the mandala of the Haruka king of wrath. From the basic space of the nature as it is, the great holder of immeasurable qualities, the wrathful female emerges, saying, He, he, and through splendor and pleasure, her lotus blossoms. The jewel enters the lotus, and they embrace inseparably in rapture. Due to the clouds of Bodhicitta, and by expressing Hung 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 Bishu Benzar Chodad Zola Mandala Fet 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 Hala 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 Hung, this mantra completely pervades the infinite space of the six realms throughout the ten directions. The assembly of wrathful mandalas emerges to pervade the trichiliocosm in numbers as vast as the particles in the ten directions of the world. In the ten directions of the six realms there is motion, moderately great motion, and extremely great motion, sounding, crashing, and colossal great crashing, barely roaring, roaring, and exceptionally loud roaring, barely shaking, shaking, and extreme intense shaking and barely rolling, rolling, and turbulently rolling. Those who abide in the ten directions of all six worlds, triliocosm realms, with the greatest power, brilliance, and strength, such as Maheshvara and so forth, faint and fall unconscious. It is then that the great joyful Bhagawan himself assumes the magnificent aspect that causes great terror and fear. Capable of assuming any manifestation, he transforms into the great blazing red-black Heruka. His heads, arms, and legs are equal to the particles in the trichiliocosm. Holding a variety of weapons, he sports three heads, six arms, and four legs. He enjoys the great charnel grounds and stands in the midst of an ocean of blood upon a great mountain of skeletons and the hub of a wheel in a great mass of blazing fire, with legs drawn in and extended, and upon a great seat of the male-female Maheshvara and the haughty queen of the charnel grounds. Some of these manifest clouds of wrathful mandalas also become the glorious great Vajra Haruka, abiding at the eastern wheel. Some become the glorious great Ratna Haruka abiding at the southern wheel. Some become the glorious great Padma Haruka abiding at the western wheel. While some become the glorious great Karma Haruka abiding at the northern wheel. All assume terrifying demeanors and in a blazing expanse shout the mighty sounds. They have three heads, six arms, and four legs. 
and are standing with legs drawn in and extended upon seats of male and female Gandharvas, Yakshas, cannibals, Yamas, and so forth. The assembly of great Haruka queens also abides with the individual Kayas in the manner of embrace. Then the great haughty ones and others perform various great and menacing magical feats with ferocious minds. There reviling cries in unison threaten with violent aggression. Release us, release us, lords of compassion, what will you do with us? Lamenting in this way, they become extremely aggressive. Then, with great joy, the Bhagavan manifests with nine heads, eighteen arms, and eight legs. Through the skillful means of compassion, he tames with a mighty voice and becomes extremely aggressive, reciting Hung Hung Hung, Ha Ha Ha, and Kahi Kahi Kahi. He removes the hearts and sense organs and takes out the internal organs of the unruly ones such as Mahashvara and others. He severs and chops up all the limbs, consuming all their flesh, drinking all their blood, and masticating all their bones. Then, by reciting, Hung Hung Hung, Jio Jio Jio, E A Ra, Li Hrin Hrin, Za Za, all the realms of the world in the ten directions, including space, are subsumed to fit within a single mustard seed. Then the kings of all the kingly earth spirits without exception, the great haughty ones and so forth, and their queens of all the royal female earth spirits, the great human female cannibal Manu Rakshasi, Brahmani, Rajri, Indrani, Vaishnavi, Kaumari, Rakti, Amurta, Shanti, Dandi, Rakshasi, Somi, Rati, blood guzzling Rudhiramadi, Ekarakarini, Manoharika, Siddhikari, Vayudevi, Bakshasi, Agnai, Varahi, Chamundi, Bhujana, Varunani, Mahakali, Mahachagala, Mahakumbakarni, Lambodara, and so forth, their retinues, attendants, and inner servants, who are as many as there are particles in the world, are completely conquered. Then, through the method for taming, the rapturous Bhagavan, great glorious Haruka, once again appears as the great five fearsome families. All joyfully delight and embrace and rest in the samadhi called emerging clouds of the mandala, which emerges from Vajra enlightened body, speech, and mind. Thus, having expressed Om Ahang Benzar Prabe, Shaya A La La Ho, all earth spirit queens become extremely attracted, and the mandalas of their lotuses are aroused and blossom like the example of a magnet attracting iron. Then the greatly joyful Bhagavan, the great Kaya of Vajra Haruka, enters into union with each of the great female cannibals of the humans, who are Manu Rakshasi, Rakti, Radhi, Bakshasi, Mahakali, Maha Chagala, Maha Kumbhakarni, and Lambodara. The Bhagavan, great glorious Haruka Chemchag of the Wheel, enters into union with Brahmani, Rajri, Indrani, Vaishnavi, and Kaumari. The Bhagavan, great glorious Haruka of the Jewel, enters into union with Amurta, Shanti, Dandi, Somi, and Rakshasi. The Bhagavan, great glorious Haruka of the Lotus, enters into union with blood guzzling Rudhiramadi, Eka Karini, Manoharika, Siddhikari, and Vayudevi. The Bhagavan, great glorious Karma Haruka, enters into union with Agnai, Varahi, Chamundi, Bhujana, and Varunani. Then the rapturous Bhagavan and all wrathful mandalas recite Hung and the entire assembly of the Lotus Mandalas joins in full embrace. Then, having taken delight, Ha is recited, and through the cause of the Bodhicitta, an assembly of Gari, an assembly of Kari, an assembly of Pramoha, an assembly of Vitali, an assembly of Pukasi, 
an assembly of Chandali, an assembly of Smashani, and an assembly of Gashmari, or Gasmari, including their astonishing individual weapons, emerge. Having emerged, they take their seats upon the spokes of the great blazing wheel, beginning in the east. In frightening forms, each one is brandishing their individual weapon. Then, in a state of rapture, by reciting He, an assembly of great Simhamuki, an assembly of Vyagrimuki, an assembly of Shurgamuki, an assembly of Shvanamuki, an assembly of Gurdamuki, an assembly of Kankamuki, an assembly of Kakamuki, an assembly of Ulukamuki all emerge with their individual weapons and astonishing accoutrements. Once they emerge, they take their seats at the perimeter of the great blazing wheel. With their awesome expressions, they form a circle beginning in the east. Their rapture then permeates the ten directions of all realms without exception. By reciting Fet, the assemblies of Vajra Tajasi, Vajra Modha, Vajra Loka, and Vajra Vitali all emerge holding their particular astonishing weapons. Once they emerge, they abide in extremely awesome forms at the four entranceways of the great blazing mandala. Then, from the joyful clouds, the sound of Fet reverberates throughout the ten directions. They all become fearsome, and even all, Matara, are sent back to their individual abodes. Kaye Ho. Then the Bhagavan takes great delight, and with great compassion, the great glorious Harukas enter into the evenness of Samadhi called the Source of Ambrosia. From their Vajra enlightened body, speech, and mind, the mantra Om Benzar Maha Amrita Maha Trodha Ang 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 emerges. Having recited this, Maheshvara and the others emerge from the anuses of the wrathful Bhagavans. From the filth of this ocean, Utsushama Trota emerges from each of the anuses to drink all the smut, and the haughty ones once again regain consciousness. The entire assembly of wrathful mandalas appears to them as kayas with 900 heads, 1,800 arms, and 800 legs abiding in the midst of great blazing fire. During the time, all the haughty, powerful males in all six ten-directional planes of existence are being tamed through inconceivable myriad methods. They are simultaneously tamed by appearing in the individual realms. Then they are panic-stricken and shiver with defeat. Take us as your servants. Accept us as your servants. You must accept us as your servants. If you don't accept us, may our heads, bodies, and hearts split and crack into a hundred pieces. May our bodies rot, decay, and burn, ruining this life. May we fall to the hells and call out to you. Thus they swear to be accepted into the retinue and are placed as seats within the mandala. All request in unison, please accept our wives, mothers, and sisters into your great mandala. Heroes, deities, lords, accept each of us and our servants. Even those who hold the name of this great mandala assembly will be respected as wish-fulfilling jewels upon our crowns. Free from deception and with respect, we take you as our objects of offering, always holding you on our crowns. We will do our best to faithfully serve you and to fully accomplish without exception whatever is desired. They go on to say, as we have verbally sworn in the presence of the heroes, if by chance we fail, may our heads, bodies, and hearts split open, be chopped to pieces, and rot. Then all their wives, mothers, sisters, and daughters instantly arrive within the mandala to request in unison. All of us, including our servants, have been accepted into the retinue of the great hero. O great hero, please grant us the Siddhi of enlightened activity. Thus they speak. 
Then, with great love, the Bhagavan hands each one a Vajra, and each receives an empowerment name and is positioned at the outer mandala. From the secret essence, definitive nature just as it is, this completes the fifteenth chapter, the intrinsic nature of the wrathful mandala emanating as clouds. Then, in a state of rapture, the Bhagavan reveals the great assembly of the mandala, so that Samaya can be accomplished. This mandala of enlightened speech, the assembly of Tathagatas, and the great wrathful Harukas, including their consorts, emerge from the mighty wisdom of Vajra enlightened body, speech, and mind. Om Sarva Tathagata Maha Shri Haruka Maha Senda Sarva Dutren Anataka Hana Daha Patsa Hung 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 Fet Om Bensar Maha Shri Haruka Maha Sendha Sarva Dutren Anataka Hana Daha Patsa Hung 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 Fet Om Ratna Maha Shri Haruka Maha Sendha Arwa Dutren Anataka Hana Daha Patsa Hung 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 Fet Om Padma Maha Shri Haruka Maha Sendha Sarwa Dutren Anataka Hana Daha Patsa Hung 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 Fet Om Karma Maha Shri Haruka Maha Sendha Sarwa Dutren Anataka Hana Daha Patsa Hung 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 Fet Om Sarva Tathagata Maha Trodhi Shorhi Sarva Dutren Hung Fet Om Maha Benzar Dara Maha Trodhi Shori Zolani Hun Fet Om Surya Ratna Dara Maha Trodhi Shori B Tama Ha Hun Fet Om Hri Shot A Samata Padma Maha Trodhi Shori Kahi Hun Fet Om Sarwa Amodha Maha Trodhi Shori Bisho Hun Fet Om Benzar Keori Ha, Om Benzar Soori Ha, Om Benzar Pramoha, Ha Benzar Betali Ha, Benzar Sandali Ha, Benzar Pukasi Ha, Benzar Gasmari Ha, Benzar Smashani Ha, Benzar Sangha Mukha He, Benzar Batri Mukha He, Benzar Trila Mukha He, Benzar Shona Mukha He, Benzar Trita Muka He, Benzar Kenka Muka He, Benzar Kaka Muka He, Benzar Hulu Muka He, Benzar Arya Tetsa Tenaga Za, Benzar Amodha Hung, Benzar Loka Bom, Benzar Bimi Palaya Wati Ho, Jo 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 Rulu 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 Hung E Haya He A Na Ya Za Hung Bam Ho Ram Om Benzar Tradha Samaya Hung Om The fearsome are pacified through wrathful means, the assemblies of awesome, glorious, wrathful ones appear through compassion. May the superb blessing of the blazing ones be bestowed upon me at this very moment. Om Benzar Samaya Tom, Om Benzar Samaya Ho, Om Benzar Samaya Fet, Om Ali Uli, Tali Tapali, Dam Tra Gona Rotri, Ka Ram Yogini, Ka Hi Ho, Hung Ha He Fet. Having recited this among the ten directions of the six worlds, all negativities burn and are incinerated, blaze, increasingly blaze, and completely blaze. The entire universe and inhabitants are filled with the brilliant mandala, assembly, that encompasses everything and fully pervades. From the secret essence, definitive nature just as it is, this completes the 16th chapter on the manifestation of the mandala, the enlightened speech of the great assembly of the wrathful ones.
Then, in order for the Bhagavan, in a state of rapture, to reveal there, i.e. the deities, mandalas, the aphorism is expressed. The blazing wheel has four spokes and is fully adorned with a four-sided foundation. It is square, has four entranceways, and is both beautified with blazing colonnades and enhanced by the sun and multitudes of skulls and serpents. Massive flames radiate light. Ferocious bears, elephants, buffalo, leopards, and tigers uphold the thrones with their hoofs and claws. The god Maheshvara and others lie intertwined. Their extremely frightening kayas are maroon-black, blue-black, yellow-black, red-black, and green-black. With three faces, six arms, and four treading legs, they wear a variety of fresh skins while their ornaments are serpents, fresh skulls, and the sun. They roar with a terrifying, awesome sound. Holding vajras and human skulls filled with blood, a sword, axe, plow, and a small drum, they symbolize the entire triliocosm while holding their various hand emblems. They are embraced by a fearsome assembly of consorts, who are the consorts of the sacred grounds and objective phenomena, the stunning consorts of the four gatekeepers. In the assemblies of wives, courtesans, and servants as the Almighty Twenty-Eight. Abiding on their individual seats and holding their hand emblems, they approach and ask, What can we accomplish for you? Having expressed this, everything in the ten directions of the six worlds appears as the blazing mandala. From the secret essence, definitive nature just as it is, this completes the 17th chapter revealing the wrathful mandalas. Then, in a state of rapture, the Bhagavan expresses the aphorism of taking great pleasure with the offerings. For this, the sacred way of making offerings and expressing generosity is to initially liberate conceptualization and familiarization with self. Then, with an indivisible mind and compassion for negative-minded, sentient beings, liberate them as indivisible. Through this unity of the great offering of union, by pleasing oneself, all Tathagatas are pleased. This great accomplishment, substance of evenness, is offered to the assembly of deities equal to oneself. The comestibles, delicacies, beverages, and garments, all the abundance possessing the five as mandalas, dissolve into the mandalas. The great, astonishing qualities of those who have departed, the sugatas throughout the ten directions and four times, develop from nothing other than familiarity with their own minds. Needless to mention, magnetizing the gods, cannibals, and so forth. Those who are qualified practitioners have perfected the Mahamudra. Nothing is based on the dualistic mind. Hence, the great mandalas will continue to strengthen. Having expressed this, the six realms of the ten directions are pervaded by great pleasurable offerings. From the secret essence, definitive nature just as it is, this completes the 18th chapter that reveals the expression of generosity in sacred offerings. Then, in a state of rapture, the Bhagavan expresses the aphorism of this extraordinary samaya, so the practitioners who uphold mantra may accomplish results. When this unsurpassed vehicle is fully understood, even by engaging in activities generated by the passions, although appearing as though involved, no habits are accrued, and the two accumulations are perfected. Hence, the disciplines and vows are fully endowed. Within the unsurpassed supreme samaya, the disciplines that are capable of taming and the limitless vows, without exception, are subsumed and perfectly pure. 
existence, non-existence, and even the middle way are non-existent, like optical illusions and magic. Since life has no true existence, there is no life to be severed. A life and an individual are merely misconceptions, because both truths are inseparable, like the way the gods of emanation partake of their own emanations. They are undifferentiated. Since the act of stealing from another and the object to be stolen are non-existent, there is no stealing, just like the space of the nature just as it is. Phenomena are like magic, and designated names and words are false. When the liar himself is telling a lie, the so-called lie does not exist even as a mere designation. Being without attachment is attachment. The moment of being without desire is attachment. This is the king of supreme purity, extremely pure great attachment. To never abandon the unsurpassed, to show respect to the guru, to not lose the continuity of mantra and mudra, to have love for those who have entered the perfectly correct path, and to not speak outside the mandala about the secret meaning are the fivefold root samayas to be accomplished in the supreme samayas that guard. To not abandon delusion, desire, hatred, pride, and jealousy, or the white ambrosia, the red ambrosia, feces, urine, and the great flesh. To not abandon the pure universe and inhabitants. These ten branches of Samaya are practiced by realizing primordial purity and evenness. The five Samayas that are guarded and practiced constitute the root. If unguarded, there will be no awakening. Both fivefold branch samayas that are not to be abandoned and are to be accepted are dangerous to transgress. Uniting with evenness and when abiding within the samaya of evenness, the great perfected evenness will be attained. If transgressed, awakening will not be reached. If a person has allowed a root to deteriorate and fails to persevere in restoration, they should not be spoken to even briefly. The faults from broken samaya are too numerous to describe. If a root samaya deteriorates, whatever one attempts to practice will be thwarted. All unwanted and undesired results will occur without reprieve. If the branch samayas deteriorate, there will be no result, and one will fall to the lower realms. All samayas are the great vajra, the nature of the Buddhas. Among the five root samayas, for the first, there are two and thirty. For the divisions of the dual five branches of samaya, for the first, there are twenty. These samayas are superb. In the ten directions of the six worlds, however many beings exist within the three planes of existence, will necessitate however many samayas will tame their concepts. Furthermore, since everything is the supreme victorious one, Samantabhadra, phenomena without exclusion are mudras. Everything is accomplished without accomplishment and without exception. That and so forth is the supremely limitless nature of Samaya. One who is a holder of this supreme family of the victorious ones will be respected by the principal worldly gods in their retinues. These supreme sublime ones will be considered sacred heirs and siblings and blessings will be granted. The kingdom of the Tathagata himself will be entered, and unity with the fearless Samantabhadra will be attained. The nature as it is and the methods for taming, however many inconceivable vows there may be, are perfectly pure, and spontaneously present without exception. 
If any Samayas have degenerated, they will be fully restored through the rituals. These and others, i.e. benefits, are infinitely supreme. Having expressed this, the Tathagatas themselves pay homage to the Tathagata himself. From the secret essence, definitive nature, just as it is, this completes the 19th chapter on Samaya. Then, delighting in great joy, the Tathagata Bhagavan rests in the Samadhi called Blessed as Spontaneously Present Samaya, and the aphorism is expressed. In the Supreme Mandala of the Assembly as E, blazing and terrifyingly awesome, a practitioner with aggression makes offerings and gives substances. Even the meritorious Kaya of the Buddha can be destroyed. With the five ambrosias, or five comestibles, the characteristics are written along with the name. By summoning, pierce with the Vajra Furba, the liberated are reduced to dust and offered to the assembly. In the mandala of the assembly, as E, eh, tightly linked like a chain, holding this, the body will undulate and sway in the ten directions. The liberated will become intoxicated, stunned, and incinerated. In the supreme mandala of gathering as Wam, blazing and magnificent like a great mountain, the practitioner makes offerings and expresses generosity with an impassioned mind. There will even be the mastery of Vajra enlightened speech. With the five ambrosias or the five comestibles, the characteristics are drawn along with their names. Piercing with the kilaya of Vajra attachment, this is offered to dissolve with the assembly of attachment. In the mandala of the assembly shaped as Wam, tightly linked like a chain, invoking the Vajra to follow them, whatever they wish for will come to pass. In the supreme mandala of the assembly as Ma, by gathering blazing rays, the great splendor radiates. Joyfully, the practitioner makes offerings and expresses generosity. The qualities are equal to limitless space. With the five ambrosias, or the five comestibles, to indicate whatever is desired as a wish-fulfilling treasury, Pierce with the furba of the joy of pride, and the splendor of the vajra will increase. In the mandala of the assembly as ma, tightly linked like a chain, as they sway, the great manifestation of blazing splendor radiates as wish-fulfilling jewels encompassing space. In the supreme mandala of the assembly as ya, ablaze with lustrous light, Clear-minded practitioners will make offerings and express generosity. Even the minds of the awesome, haughty ones will become fully awakened. With the five ambrosias and the five comestibles, this indicates the nature that is fearsome, terrifying, and highly disturbed. Clearly visualizing, pierce with the furba and make offerings to the blazing assembly. In the mandala of the assembly as Yah, tightly linked like a chain, even raging anger is completely pervaded by blessings. All of the practitioner's minds become unwavering. Deliver the remainders to those who wish to partake, consorts, sisters, and servants, and clearly remind them of their individual samayas. They are commanded to engage in whatever activity is needed. At the time of the great, glorious Haruka, he appears extremely frightening and wrathful with astonishing blessings and the power to tame all without exception. By overcoming the great god, i.e. Maheshvara, and so forth, the entire retinue is blessed as consorts in the powerful male deities. Each are commanded to engage their individual enlightened activities. Just as you promised, do not delay and swiftly bring forth the results. If you do not act according to your promises, you will transgress your sacred oaths and vows that you swore to uphold. 
do not transgress these vows. If you transgress this Samaya, then your hearts, heads, and bodies will be chopped into seven pieces by the wrathful Yakshas. Therefore, it is vital that you act in accord with the command of this mantra practitioner. If there is no result from your activity, then you have lost your oath and promise. You will rot, burn, and be tormented as you fall to hell. Practitioners who uphold Samaya must engage in whatever activities are needed. Guard my retinue like your own child. Even the Pasaki will attain Siddhis. Manifest whatever enlightened activities are requested. Thus the command is given. This is the principal enlightened activity for accomplishing the wrathful mandala. By this great song and dance of the great Haruka and so forth, every activity, whatever is desired, and all common as well as every supreme siddhi will be accomplished. Through the greatness of the song and dance of the great treasury and the rest, if magnetizing is wished for, they, i.e. the deities, have the power to do so. If the wish is for longevity and wealth to increase, they will ensure it. Through the greatness of the song and dance of Pukasi and the rest, if pacification is wished for, they will pacify. If the wish is to render their minds dull, they will do so. Through the greatness of the song and dance of Simha Mukha and the rest, they devour all enemies without even the subtlest particle of dust remaining. Through the greatness of the song and dance of Gurdra Muki and the rest, the organs of all are removed without exception, and their abundance drastically reduced. Through the greatness of the song and dance of the consorts and their attendants, they defeat, implore, and eliminate all negative activities, and accomplish every positive activity. Fruit-bearing trees, an orchard, a single tree, and a charred forest, clarity, joy, passion, and aggression, and Kali must be accomplished. By having expressed this, the Tathagata himself accomplishes the Tathagata himself. From the secret essence definitive nature just as it is, this completes the twentieth chapter on the spontaneous presence of enlightened activity called blessings. Then, in a state of rapture, the Bhagavan and assembly of the mandala sing this song with passionate expressions. Hung, greatly fearsome, blazing like the fire at the end of time and radiant like the light rays of a hundred thousand suns, with swift, wrathful demeanors like a thousand lightning bolts, they devour with razor-sharp fangs. Ho, hung, like the sound of a thousand dragons roaring, their wrathful sound is as loud as a hundred thousand mountains collapsing. Their great laughter is ah, ah, ha, and la, and they pant with the force of a hurricane, intimidating unruly ones into a great frenzy. Ho, hung, the great light of prajna that counteracts ignorance completely, illuminates the wisdom mandala. This blazing wisdom fully subjugates. The various wisdoms are the great soul essence. Ho! Hung from the kings of wrath referred to as great clouds, great showers of wrathful mandalas descend. Mandalas emerge like wish-fulfilling treasures. These various wrathful forms are the great soul essence. Ho! Hung, of all demons, they, i.e. the wrathful ones, are the great demons. The demons among demons, all demonic negativities, are to be destroyed. Terrifying even the ferocious assemblies, the great fearsome one is the great soul essence. Ho! Hung, the great Vajra rock is extremely firm, and there are the great Vajra river that gathers the great Vajra fire that blazes, and the great Vajra wind that scatters. Ho! Hence the Tathagata sings this aphorism. From the secret essence, definitive nature just as it is, 
This completes the 21st chapter praising the wrathful ones. Then, in a state of rapture, the Bhagavan expresses the aphorism to the Tathagata himself to firmly uphold this king of secret mantra. Kaye, Kaye, this intrinsic nature of the ten directions and four times is the genuine essence of the Tathagatas. Those who maintain the elaborations of grasping and fixation are caught by their individual lassos of concepts. Even the arrangements of the various grounds are steps on the path leading to this secret essence. This wisdom is all pervasively astonishing, since the Buddha never taught anything that was not of benefit. Having realized this great secret essence, the mudra of all Tathagatas, the one who then teaches this is who I am, and even all empowerments are perfected. Except for this secret, there is nothing else that all the Tathagatas possess. The very nature of this secret essence that emerges from the definitive space of absolute truth pacifies exaggerated eternalism and the repudiation of nihilism. Those who are only definitive and predicted as the heirs born from this enlightened mind will abide on the supreme ground of Avidyadhara. Having expressed this, all Tathagatas take delight in this inseparable nature and abide in the space of evenness of the fourth time as the ornament of the spontaneous rich array of enlightened body, speech, and mind. From the secret essence, definitive nature just as it is, this completes the 22nd chapter on how the Tathagatas are pleased in this Tantra is fully upheld. From the 100,000 chapters of the Magical Manifestation Matrix, the Sublime King of the Conceptual, this general transmission of all causal vehicles as well as all Tantras is the secret of all Tathagatas. All vehicles without exclusion emanate from this secret essence, definitive nature just as it is. From among the turnings of the Dharma Chakra, this supreme resultant Tantra is complete. In the presence of the Indian Pandita Vimalamitra, this was translated by the Tibetan Lotsawas Niyak Jinana Kumara and Ma Rinchen Chok.